All right, welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 24th of November. Uh, remind you that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So we had uh, topics today, um, JEP 234, um, Ildefonso, uh, and help me, what's your preference for how we should refer to Ildefonso is? is... It's okay, it's okay, Ildefonso is okay. <laughs> Great, all right. Then I had an item on results from the 2.3.19.1 LTS testing. Uh, Jan, did you want to give us a, would love to have an overview from you on upcoming and current UI improvements and theme manager, are those okay? That sounds great. Okay, super. Any other topics we should add to the agenda? All right, then let's go with those and we'll we'll take more more topics as we need them. Yeah, if Alfonso, time, you, oh, go ahead. Say, if there's time, there's that there's a pull request from someone for the pipeline graph view plugin. Um, I can show the screenshot and say if anyone's got any feedback for it. I haven't okay. ran it myself yet, but it's quite a nice one to take a look at. Oh, very good. Okay. Excellent, thanks. Okay, so you're on the on the agenda. If time allows, we'll get there. Ildefonso, you want to go ahead and take us through two thirty four? Yep. Okay. Um, can I share my screen, or maybe if you can open the link? Uh, we'll just have you share your screen. That way, you can okay. drive, and I can take notes. Perfect. Perfect. Let me look up for that. And I'll mute myself so that the clattering of my keyboard is not uh, obnoxious. Okay. Finally. Here we are. Okay, can you see my screen properly? Perfect. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, give me the opportunity to share this with you. This JEP is my first one, and also is my first contribution um, UX, let's say, uh, on Jenkins. Mostly the main motivation here is to try to provide a proposal uh, to the community regarding uh, the Jenkins header, trying to make this more customizable, not only in terms of UI, also providing mechanisms for the current header, and also for Jenkins for injecting different um, uh, programmatically uh, code, let's say, uh, not only static code or static resources based on other uh, alternatives that we have these days. Uh, main idea here is mostly uh, or how I reason uh, this approach and what motivates me to do that is because right now, if we want to update this header, we need to use, we have several approaches to follow, like for example, use the Simpleton plugin or other approaches uh, regarding this. That is mostly based on try to customize CSS, JavaScript or other um, static content. But um, also there are other alternatives like for example, using diff, mat, diff patch maven plugin that also can help us to replace some parts based on static content, also based on patches mostly. But uh, I tried to set up a dummy example to illustrate what I wanted to do, which is mostly here. It's mostly, okay, with this tooling that I have these days, can I create a new header to set up a kind of configurable message uh, and also other uh, other things from the header, like for example, using why not two or three or whatever uh, search boxes or whatever. So main idea here was try to make this to happen and identify things to that can be improved on that plugins or also on the Jenkins core. So for that purpose, I I realized that finally simple thin plugin was not enough. I can do it but has to, that requires me to do a lot of hacky things uh, which are not um, 
I, I don't like it, to be honest, the, the solution. I will prefer to have something on, on Jenkins core that as for other uh, components, provide me the extensibilities and the capabilities to perform this in a cleaner manner, uh, mostly using extension points. So that's the idea that I have in mind. I also tried with the diff patch uh, Maven plugin and I was not able to do it because as I told you before, it only helps for static content and also has other additional drawbacks. So I tried to uh, move forward this approach based on extension points. So what I did is to set up a, oh, well, let me show you what, what is exactly what I wanted to have at least for this example, which is something like this. Okay, I was trying to do something quite simple, like having a quick, it's, it's you know, it's so, so simple, but it's trying to illustrate what I was looking for, okay? It's trying to uh, include a new search box here, also including here a new um, uh, label, which could be, uh, Customizable, okay? It's not a static content. It has to be retrieved from logic from the Java code of the Jenkins core or whatever uh, place, okay? Uh, maybe, for example, for a field in the global configuration of Jenkins or things like that. Okay, so uh, here we are. What I wanted to, to do then is to try to use extension points or try to set up the header as an extension point. First of all, trying to set up expectations here. If you, in case you didn't read the, the jet, jet. Uh, I was trying, I was not trying to, I, I think it's a good idea, but I was not trying to in perform mm, extension points for each section of the header. I mean, I am going to do an extension point for the total replacement of the header by itself. I was not proposing, I think it's a good idea and can be a follow-up of this jet to have an extension point for modifying or doing an incremental change for the logo, for the message about Jenkins branding, for the search boxes, for the uh, administrative monitors, etc., etc. Okay, but this is not the scope of this jet. This, is, this jet can be a first initial step for reaching that but at this moment is only a replacement of the entire uh, um, header, okay? So based on that, I introduced this new extension point, which is called header, which only one method, which is mostly to check if the header is going to be enabled or not, okay? And you can create uh, plugins that extends this extension point for provide your own headers, okay? Also this uh, extension point header, uh, provides a method that I'm going to uh, come back later to this, but it's, it's called get it, and it's mostly doing a search for all the extensions loaded, all the extension points from headers that are enabled. Okay, trying to get all the headers that you can provide via the plugins and providing you the first one. The first one is uh, because we are introducing I'm going to uh, show you later, but I, I can uh, show you in advance. We are using the ordinal from the extension to try to set up a prioritization. I mean, uh, I can prioritize what header wants to be rendered based on this on this value. Okay. If there is no header enabled, uh, we will provide the Jenkins header as the default header. Okay. And Jenkins header now it's being refactored. It's a new, uh, uh, a new extension point. It's not in the Jenkins core yet, but based on this approach, it's a new header and it's always being enabled uh, by default, okay? So given say that, if I have a Jenkins core with these uh, capabilities, I am able to create a custom plugin for setting up any header, okay? And I can provide uh, a header like I was looking for in the example that I showed you before. So I set up this one, which uh, implements the, the is enable method using checking of system properties, environment variables, whatever. Okay. And uh, also I'm providing new additional uh, business logic inside this header, like for example, this one, which is the one that is going to provide me the value of the label that I want to put, that I want to put 
in the in the header uh, that can be obtained programmatically. Okay, I didn't uh, code that part, but this is just for illustrating purposes. Okay. Uh, given say that, how I need to modify the page header jelly because the page header jelly is the one that is rendering the jelly the header by in the core. Okay, so this approach is uh, reducing uh, to the minimum the that file that resource from the core, mostly uh, invoking the method get of the extension point header and try to inject the content of the header provided by each plugin. So we move the, enti the entire page header jelly from the Jenkins core to a new file called header content. And this header content is provided by uh, this Jenkins header, okay? If you create a new one, you should provide a new header content and that header content can be code as you prefer. In my case, I reuse the most of the previous one and I include this new method to get the label that I want to put, okay? And also to duplicate the code for having two different search boxes, okay? Uh, one uh, important topic here is about the backward compatibility. Uh, we try to guarantee backward compatibility here in this approach by means of introducing two intermediate extension points, which are the full header and the partial header. Full header is going to represent any header that doesn't require any resource from Jenkins core in terms of CSS, JavaScript, icons, images, etc. Okay, it's about, okay, if something changed on Jenkins core, my header is not going to break because I'm not referencing any style, any images, any icon, etc. Partial header is the opposite. If my header is partial header, I can be uh, affected by changes on the Jenkins core because I'm using in my header content.jelly file references to CSS, icons, whatever. So we provide for partial header and a specific field called compatibility header version, which needs to be updated every time the Jenkins core modifies any of these resources that can be can make me to be uh, incompatible, okay? This also is see for us to perform testing based on this, for example, PCT or things like that, to evaluate that my header is going to be compatible or not with the latest changes of the Jenkins header. So, as I told you, there is a, a, a reference implementation here, which is uh, mostly the plugin that I told you before. And there is an um, open PR on Jenkins core getting a lot of traction. Um, what, why I'm not able to go to here? Okay. This one, which is mostly providing the implementation of this approach that I show you. Uh, let me show you in a few minutes how it looks. But as I told you before, this is the implementation of the full header. It's a header and it's always going to be compatible because it's totally unrelated, it's separated from the changes that can happen on the Jenkins core. So you can always extend for this if you are going to provide your own resources, your own images, your own style, etc., for setting up a replacement of the uh, Jenkins core header, okay? Partial header, no, sorry, header is the one, the most important one, which is the extension point that I propose in this PR, which is mostly checking if the header is going to be available, based on is going to be compatible and is enabled. Okay, so my get method is mostly evaluating that. If the header is compatible and is available, let's see uh, the, his priority number based on the ordinal of the extension, and let's use this in case it's the maximum one, okay? If there is not, let's use the default one, which is the Jenkins one. Jenkins header is always enabled by default. And a partial header, as I told you before, is the one that is going to deal with the compatibility uh, based on the compatibility header version. So uh, as I told you before, every, let's say, the agreement is that if you are going to modify 
things related to the header, you should update this number to make the other possible uh, extension points provided by uh, plugins to take uh, care about it because you can break the things that are in, in that uh, plugins, okay? And yeah, and it provides also a method called incompatible headers to create a administrative monitor in case your instance detects that there is a header that is not uh, compatible. In that case, your header is not going to be rendered. The default one is going to be rendered and there is going to happen, there is going to show you an administrative monitor telling you, hey, your header is not compatible, please update or whatever. Okay. This is a header content of the, which is the same of the page header jelly that we have these days on the Jenkins core. And this is the page header jelly modification that I propose, which is mostly removing everything because it's going to be in the header content and just injecting the content from the extension point that is going to provide you this. Okay. So I think that it's all that I have to share. Um, I would love to have feedback from you in this PR also in, in the context of this meeting about what do you think about this approach? Do you think it's useful? Do you see any, uh, mm, any concern, any drawback about this? Uh, I will appreciate a lot. Uh, so that's all. So now one of the, I think one of the open questions was, are we ready to merge that pull request into, into Jenkins core, uh, the one that we see here? Uh, were there any concerns from others in the call? Oh, we should talk about this before we, before we decide to merge? The, um, from my side, the only point uh, in this PR uh -huh. that requires maybe uh, some attention is because um, uh, at the very beginning, there was some confusion about, uh, let me try to identify where it is. Okay, here, there is a comment from Oleg. Also, he's reviewing again, uh, yesterday, I guess, he started to re-review again the, the PR because there are some uh, mixed expectations about what this is doing, okay? As I told you at the very beginning, this is about a total replacement of the header. This is not about making uh, an incremental changes. And this can be used as a first step for getting incremental changes, but at this moment it's not. So this is the only thing uh, that caused confusions at the very beginning of, the, of this, when I created this PR, mostly two weeks ago. Uh, after that, I was, working with the feedback that some of folks of the community provided me, uh, mostly trying to get a good um, approach about how to deal with the backward compatibility because was one of the things more uh, important here because if not, uh, your headers can be break uh, in any case for each change that you can perform on the Jenkins core without noticing anything. So we work on that direction and, and finally we get an, an approach here. And, and that's all from my side. I don't know if you, uh, as a group, want to review this in deep. Uh, do you see any problem in the approach? This is the reason why I'm here, to be honest. I, I wanted to right. share this with you. And also I want to have uh, to listen. What do you think about this? And if it makes sense or not, or do you see any problem? Okay, so Tim, any comments that you wanted to offer there? Is this... Uh, my only comment really is same as before is it's a bit of a hammer but it works and I don't really want to spend too much on it it's a very cloud B specific feature I think um, that's not really going to impact many people um, and this works okay. I don't hugely like it but it works and as long as and CloudBees will support LTS versions and they'll test it before they update. So it's not realistically going to affect CloudBees. Um, it'd be a little bit riskier for people with a weekly um, release. If someone was to add this feature with a weekly, then we do something to the header and then things break. But I don't really see many people gonna, going to do it. Okay, and then Ian, I see you've got your hand raised. 
All right, thanks, Mark. Um, I may have just glanced over this in, in the description, but is there any integration that should the uh, content on core change um, that there would be a warning to, to the user in, in the warnings at the top? Um, yeah. I uh, don't know if that's possible, but. There's a con there was a concept of a partial replacement where they don't inline CSS or copy CSS to their own application or a full replacement. The partial one will log, the full one won't, but it'll be the responsibility of integrators to review any changes to the header in between if they need it or they just assume they'll never need it and they'll say if the search API changes, then they have to deal with it. Yeah, also as I told you before, in case that something is incompatible, this uh, monitor is going to be rendered and also your header is going to be replaced by the default one, trying to not crash in your UI, you know? Yeah, um, that, so, you know, sorry, I must have missed that, but that's that was the answer I was looking for to see that there was a, a warning or an alert that popped up. Um, yeah. And you obviously the, the back down behavior sounds great. It just- You might be missing a space there, by the way, between the sentences can be removed and see the log for more details. Hmm. Hmm. Good, good presentation might, check, yeah. Might be so a screenshot though. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, this is all that I have. I don't know if you have any other question or you want to move to uh, next topic of the agenda. So it sounds like my interpretation of Tim's comments was he's okay with it going forward. It, it as he phrased it, it's a it's a, a big on off switch, not an incremental small thing. But and it's probably only useful to to large scale vendors like Cloudbees. And that's but I think that's that was meeting your need, Ildefonso. So I I think we're ready to go to the next unless somebody has other comments. Okay, then let's take, I'm gonna steal back screen share. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here. All right. And here are the, so the next topic, I had an item on 2.319.1 2 that will release um, next week. It includes a number of UI improvements during interactive tests, we found uh, a missing icon and there was a deadlock report. I just, for your info, intend to propose backports of those two into uh, the 2.319.1 LTS. That's it. Are there others who've had any results that they've seen or issues they've seen with 2.319.1 that we need to be concerned about as we prepare for this new LTS? Great. Okay, then that's all I needed to talk to that one. Next topic then, upcoming UI improvements, Jan. Sure. Um, I'll share my screen if that's all right. Yes, please. Awesome. Um, sweet. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Sweet. Um, so I just thought I'd give a quick demo of, of kind of merged in UI changes and also some upcoming ones slash kind of experimental ones. Um, so I just minimize that. Um, so recently we've just got the table redesign merged in. Um, and I've also had a PR since then to update um, some other tables, such as the nodes table. Well, that was really done. Um, like the users table and other tables. That was really good. Um, we've also had the kind of new view and new node page update merged in um, since then. And that seems to be going okay. Um, so that, they're, they're both done at this point. Um, so following that, I've kind of worked on the rest of the forms. Um, so I mean, I've got a branch open now called update forms, um, which goes through a lot of the components and updates them. So they're all consistent. Um, so this is the configure screen. Um, so unlike the current release, um, everything is now styled correctly, um, with the exception of some plugins. Um, so say text areas have the correct styling. Um, select now properly styled so then I normally use the kind of browser theme. Um, Checkboxes have styling now as well, um, as well as the little kind of conditional drop downs. 
Um, so that's all styled. Um, I've got a branch to address the kind of validation because right now it looks a little bit dodgy kind of sitting so close to the text boxes. Um, that's just not in this in this kind of branch or uh, slice yet, shall we say. Um, so as I said, there's, <laughs> yes. Um, so some plugins, a lot of plugins kind of work fine as long as they use the built-in Jenkins components. Um, so if we just scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see kind of this plugins using the built-in input. So it gets styled correctly. Um, it's using the correct checkboxes, so it gets styled kind of out of the box for free. Um, but sadly here, this little select isn't being styled. So um, it'll be a fairly small PR just to just to clean that up, um, but it wouldn't be anything major. Um, so that's that for the kind of form stuff. Um, kind of since last time, I've kind of given the tool tips and the kind of drop downs of a cleanup again. Um, so as I said last time, I'm on the wrong thing. Um, I've kind of tried to approach the kind of Yahoo UI drop downs and tool tips and try to kind of replace them. Um, so that UI has just been given a cleanup since last time. Um, it looks like so. Um, what else is there? Again, the buttons are all here still. They've been kind of redesigned um, and they're consistent with say the new inputs and controls. Um, and the other thing is the new plugin screen as well, um, which again, I've got a branch open for now. Um, and that's available for review if anyone has the time to leave any more comments. Um, so it's side, got the new- Does the sidebar a bit wide on the screen? It looks, looks like there's uh, a lot of dead space there. I might've broken that, I'm not too sure. And I'll take a look after this. Um, kind of one idea I had um, at the same time that was just to move this tab bar to the side because there's a lot of, as you said, dead space. So we could save some vertical space by just shifting that to the left, but it's- Yeah, kind of maybe we shift it to the left and then move the filter down to where they are because the filter looks a bit strange up off, mm -hmm. off so far away from the table. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the new plugin manager, it's got the new table design, it's got the new tab bar, um, new input. Um, it's missing the checkboxes um, right now, so I just need to update that so it's using the new checkboxes. Um, it does feature uh, for the install page some toggle switches and some new buttons using the new icons. Um, the reason I went for kind of toggle switches over the checkboxes is because they kind of serve different purposes for these screens. Um, so for this screen, the toggle switch represents whether the plugin is enabled or not. Um, whereas on the updates are available, they're used for selection purposes. Um, hence, the, I've, I've changed it to be different. So they're kind of no longer the same there. Um, and that's kind of all for the, the plugin manager stuff. Um, so have, you had, any have you had a chance to go through much of Uli's feedback on plugin manager? I've had, I've had a look at some, I'm not had a chance to do a lot yet. Um, one of the things I wanted to look at was, uh, you see the buttons down here. I wanted to change one of them to a checkbox, as one of the comments said, because um, it can be a little confusing having two buttons to install. Yeah, it's super um, weird having three, three buttons and a sticky thing. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to kind of take a look at that. And then there's some other stuff as well that was, was really good, so. Um, just finding the time really between this and the, and the form stuff right now. Um, so that's that's that for the stuff that I've kind of got uh, branches for right now. One um, thing I noticed on this one is the text looks a bit bold on the description. Oh sure. yeah, yes, yeah. I'm not too sure where that came from. I'll yeah. I'll write a note of that. I think I noticed um, it, but I maybe didn't end up commenting about it in the PR. But it looks <laughs> looking at it again. Yeah, it's definitely a touch too bold, isn't it? Um, so that's that for the stuff that I've got branches for. Um, kind of got two things left to show. Um, one is kind of updating the design for the themes plugin. Actually, three things, sorry. Um, 
versus updating Ian, the design. Ian and Felix have got their hands up at the moment. I'm not sure if you guys want oh, to button now or sorry. if you want to. Uh, yeah, I just I just had a question. Um, it, well, it was uh, I thought it, you were sort of finished. It was mostly a comment, uh, a bit of feedback um, re regarding the the boldness of the copy on the tables. It just that uh, if everything is bold, it defeats a bit of the purpose of it being bold. I I didn't know if that was by design or it was if that was intentional. Because, but you just said it that it wasn't. So. Uh, and another thing is that can you can you go back to a table, please? Sure. Um, um, so I I did see a comment on a ticket regarding the accessibility uh, of the tables because um, there were there was a feedback on I don't know in which issue regarding the table headers that first the the, the text spacing in the letter spacing mm -hmm. uh, that the chance was a bit difficult to read for some people and the capitalization. And I, I, it would be great to have fully here here because full on capitalization. We have we we have discussed this a uh, year and, a, and something ago uh, about having stuff full uppercase. Mm -hmm. And the reason we decided to go without it was because in some languages like German, capitalization does have meaning. For example, whether a word is a noun or or not or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I think there was uh, the the feedback uh, on the ticket was in that sense regarding the capitalization and and the mm -hmm. letter spacing. I, I I wanted to ask if that's something you you are taking into account or you're planning on revisiting. Again, it would be helpful to have fully here because he well he's actually German, so to mm -hmm. or Daniel. Yeah, um, definitely something I want to revisit. Um, I, I saw the comment it was about a team. Using kind of capitalization for kind of ordering purposes or something like that. Um, no, there's a, there's a bug I think with the views oh. in that. I think it. I think somehow the if you if you create apple with a capital A, banana with a capital B, and then apple lowercase a and banana lowercase b, or not quite that like apple one banana one, mm -hmm. then it goes like apple banana apple banana rather than apple 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 because the sorting mm -hmm. is broken in the in the back end code. Um, so I think that's really just a separate bug that should be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, than... I, I, thought, I thought there was an accessibility comment. Well, well, well again, I, uh, I think that's uh, from the accessibility, I think it's, uh, it's an issue. I just wanted to raise it mm -hmm. uh, and to, 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 to go over that comment. I, I didn't know it was a, a functional thing, a, a, a behavior bug instead of an accessibility comment. I, I just wanted to comment on, on that. And uh, sure. people there, and um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. For yeah, um, it's definitely something I'll I'll revisit. Um, if it's causing issues, then don't see why why we can't just go back to the kind of previous casing and. Yeah, I would I would I would suggest casing. bringing Daniel Beck or Uli Hafner, because mm -hmm. well they, they they actually do speak German, so uh, maybe I mean, yeah. So, um. Were there any more hands up? I, uh, I can't see yeah. them on my screen. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually uh, why I showed up today. <laughs> um, and I'm all for the uh, the making life simpler and a, a cleaner UI. I just have uh, some concerns about this particular implementation. A couple things have, have been mentioned. Um, but the first one I'd, I'd say is in, in reading the PR, I actually saw that there were really three different changes. Uh, one was um, to the table um, presentation itself. Uh, the second one was to the or the table construction, let's say. Uh, the second one was the change to the capitalization. Um, and as someone just pointed out, it seems like the letter spacing seems to be very wide on this. Um, and the third one that hasn't been mentioned is this integration of the ion icon set. Um, so I, I'm not sure what rules there are around uh, or guidance around pull requests, but you know, in my three decades of configuration management experience, I would have recommended that those be three separate uh, pull requests, because if you want to take one and not the other, then you can manage that far easier. Um, and in terms of those 
three specific things. Um, you know, in terms of the icon change, um, the Jenkins 65124, which is the nobody likes the samey weather icons. Uh, I checked the numbers and it's uh, in, in the reported issues, it was uh, the number one issue reported in the, the LTS releases so far, 50% uh, more than the um, UTF-8 change not working and the tables to divs breaking things. So it seemed to have drawn a lot of attention uh, and that hasn't been addressed and hasn't been linked to this change at all. So I know there were a lot of people who were kind of surprised by those icons. Um, and now we're going to go change them again, although they're a lot more similar to what's there right now. Um, but it would be nice to have a resolution on 65124 before making another change to that. Um, you know, personally, I find it strange that we have faster and faster uh, video cards and GPUs, and yet we're presenting more monochromic, monochromic, simple UIs. But, you know, that that's a personal taste thing. I just think another change before you resolve the first one would probably throw a lot of people off. Um, the other one in terms of the spacing, um, I'm not sure if I can share my screen because uh, what I did is I actually pulled up the the oldest instance that we have running is actually 121.1 and created a little example um, to compare what you see today to to what it used to be. And I don't know if I can share. Uh, I guess. Uh, so, Jan, 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 do you mind if I stop your sharing? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so let's see how, to, oh, there we go. Okay, Ian, go ahead. And let's see here. Uh, okay. You should be seeing my Chrome session? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the main landing page right now. I just kind of hacked together a little something. Um, so one of the things is, we barely have any room for uh, um, this. And of course I didn't run any jobs, so I don't even have the, the space for the time date field, um, but that's going back. So we had a, a far more dense UI presentation, smaller font gave a little more room. Um, you know, it's quite a bit different, especially for people who are working on laptops with less vertical space. We seem to be about 50% more spaced out vertically. Um, the other one is on the, the headers here. You can see this is the new presentation and we actually have, um, you know, we use uh, folders for product categories, um, views for product and we actually have a split naming convention where the, the uh, application names are part of the job in uppercase, or the, the first part is the, the application name. There's a corresponding folder in uppercase and the type of job that we're using, if it's a deploy, we use, uh, uh, it has deploy in the title, for example, and it would be a lowercase, um, you know, it would be one of these bananas or lemons for deploy or security analysis. So we grouped those together. We took advantage of the, the bizarre little naming. Um, but, you know, just looking at this field of words, it's really hard to, to visualize where the buttons are in comparison to, to where the tabs were. So I don't know if anything can be cleaned up for that. Um, and yeah, I'm looking at our one and we've got four rows and it kind of just looks like a big text blob at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it, once you get above two or three, I think the new one looks a bit weird with the tabs. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, is, is you'll notice cherries is at the beginning. I, 
I just hacked that one to test something. But bananas and lemons, if you take a look, bananas and lemons are in lowercase. Cherries actually has a leading space, and that's why it's appearing first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think you can rely on that forever. We may fix no, this. No, <laughs> that, that, was, that was just, uh, I wonder what would happen experiment yesterday. Uh, that, but we do, we did kind of accept the uppercase is first, lowercase is second. Um, and, you know, there's that numeric sequence counting thing that's come up as well that, you know, is it, you know, one, seven, 11, or one, 11, seven. Um, and there are a number of issues about how you sort. Um, and there was a request on this PR to create a uh, a new issue to track this sorting issue. I'm not sure if it was covered, or sorry, to cover the the tab sorting issue because I'm not sure if it was covered. But I think I did find an existing ticket. Yeah, for it's it. an existing ticket. I might yeah, um, I'd like to take a look if I get a chance. Yeah. But so I don't know if there's a way to just tag all the sorting presentation issues together as an epic and, and have a, a uh, global approach, possibly even with a user preference as to whether you care about case sensitivity or not. Um, and I know that too may present an issue in Windows that doesn't seem to care whether it's case sensitive or not, but this is running on Windows. So we are seeing it. Um, Felix, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to comment about the typography. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to comment about is that uh, we changed the typography either on the LTS of March or of June in 2020. No, yeah, 2020. Uh, and the reason was that one of the things we changed it first, it was because it was really, really, really inconsistent. It, it had really, it went as low as uh, nine pixels in some cases, it, it had mix, mixture of 11, 12. So uh, what we did was basically, uh, we looked at basically all uh, tools that we have, like GitHub, GitLab, uh, other shit, basically everything that deals with systems management, everything, uh, almost all software in the industry goes with a 14 pixel font base font size, which is what we are using here. And basically we sort of standardize fonts in sizes of 12, 14, and, uh, and 16. Uh, actually, and actually the, the CSS variables are for 12, uh, 14, and 16. And I wouldn't recommend going any lower than 12. And I think it would be, maybe for the tabs, it could be good to go as low as 12. I don't know, uh, but definitely not lower than that, which is what you may be showing because it, uh, it the typography should um, really had lots of issues with consistency and at least now it's consistent. Uh, and about the white and the vertical spacing, uh, that's also something that came up a lot with the form changes when tables to these dips happened. And, I don't know. Maybe I, I I think it's also a matter of personally. Uh, I think it's a matter of being used to to more compact stuff. Uh, but I I do see your I do see wh where you're coming from. But I I think to a point that, that there's taste and um and I think it's a bit more generally accessible to have a vertical spacing and, and a bit more white space in between the elements. But I don't want to make general statements on that regard. And I, I do recognize it is a sort of trend in the industry that it seems that, uh, you know, land might be the most expensive thing in the world, but apparently screen real estate is free. So people just use as much as they want. Um, but, you know, on a smaller screen, uh, you do end up doing a lot of scrolling. You know, we have some, I don't know about you guys, but we have some things that have 200 jobs on a particular page and you got to scroll up and down and see what's going on. Um, even some of the options, if you take a look at, uh, I think I have it here. So the proxy configuration screen, um, you know, 
it has expanded quite a bit. So you don't even get to see the content. Um, and these are all at, at the exact same 80% um, zoom that I'm using here. So uh, that, that, that also has to do, sorry for interrupt, uh, with layout. Uh, if you see in like it has form layout or with levels to the side, and one of the reasons what, well, for that was changing is because uh, Jenkins has lots of repeatable elements, which would ne form elements, which would be nested. And because of the form labels were put to the side, the forms were would have lots of scrolling and would get really, really wide. So in, in this case, in the case for the forms, it was because most well mostly because it's a bit more accessible and second because of the nested repeatable within a hetero list or within all that stuff uh, having labels next uh, on this on, uh, having horizontal form groups just didn't really scale and there were a lot of issues with that namely the famous git configuration uh, git, uh, git pipeline configuration and i don't know if you all remember that it just went overflowing the container in the screen so that's why, uh, and what you, uh, the downside, vertical spacing, the, the forms are taller. Uh, I, I just want to provide a bit of context there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly recall the Git issue. <laughs> um, don't need to revisit that. Um, and the, the vertical space is, is not really the, the biggest beef, it's kind of the, the stretched out looking fonts. It's almost like a, a, a monospace font on everything. And it just seems, uh, you know, the, the one thing that remains kind of in the old style font seems to be the, the content of the table, but that's the most important, but the least visually um, striking part of this page you know I'm, like tim said I'm, I'm just drawn to that banner of random words right um but i i agree on what you're saying and that the many of the plugins especially that i've looked at are, are like wow you know people have kind of done their free form interpretation of how best to to do a, a, a form layout um but I, I do think this kind of size font, um, you know, would still be acceptable. Maybe it's just the, the choice of font that's been used here. Um, and maybe it would make sense once everything is the same font. Um, I think it's the same font on the same size. Does yeah, it well, if it's, sorry. If it is, it presents differently, right? Yeah. No, I agree with you, by the way. I, 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 I think it should be lowercase and with at least I 400. Uh, in my opinion, if 400 uh, font size or, or at most 500. Yeah. And sentence case. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that was the, the concerns I had. You know, the, the first is the three issues, because if you decide not to go with, one of them right now you, you've got them all lumped so i don't know and unfortunately it's already in 322 um so i don't know what can be done about that if you know you kind of now have to take them all or not into the lts right no, the next lts is to is uh three two one uh three nineteen well so when it goes table, into the table, LTS. tables aren't in doubt, yes, for three months. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got three months for evaluation and okay. at least two months before LTS selection. So this is exactly the right time for this to have arrived so that we can discuss it, uh, hone it, refine it in future weeklies. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is a perfect place to give feedback and to, to work on it. Yeah. Okay. Um the other piece that kind of comes out of this, um, which possibly make a, a separate item if, if you want to discuss it or now, now or not. As a user, um, you know, I caught this one 
just randomly because I happen to be checking the weekly release, but as a user, I always use the LTS. We support a large enterprise environment with many Jenkins instances and all that. But we were caught off guard by the other UI change. And I know there is a, a UX SIG, but there didn't seem to be um, a lot of discussion on there or uh, um, guidance as to what goes to the SIG as a governance group to say this is um, the changes we are proposing. I'm just not sure how I'm glad uh, the JEP 234 was presented. Um, but in terms of the other one, you know, there's, I didn't see a JEP on it, uh, on the, the, the table layout changes. I didn't see a, a JIRA issue on it. It just sort of appeared. Same thing with the style icon. So I don't know what guidance there is for users to go through the, make it visible to the, the, the SIG or put in a JEP or follow um, the, the old design guidelines that are out there. So it, it definitely was presented one or two UX SIGs ago. Uh, Jan did a great demonstration of it. We used it quite a bit. It's noted in the change logs. I'm a little, I, I, I don't think we want to put the overhead for UI changes to go through the JET process in general. Jenkins enhancement propo proposals are larger kinds of things and the UI, the UX SIG has focused itself on keeping things moving forward. So I'm, I'm definitely not ready to say, Ooh, we must have a, a Jenkins enhancement proposal for these kinds of changes. I don't think, I, I think that's too heavyweight. Okay, well, you, you're part of the, the, the governance group and, and I'm, I'm happy to, to defer to your opinion. I'll, I'll just say that, you know, my, my experiences with, you know, large enterprises who have always had a, a very uh, robust style guide that's been in place, you know, and it covers things like font and logo presentation and alignment between things and, you know, stuff like white space and where you put the, the colored banners and all that. Um, and that's part of the identity of the company. And the question would be is, you know, how much of the identity of, of Jenkins is reflected through the UI? I know people have said, oh, the, the UI looks stale. So that makes Jenkins look like an old product. Um, but you know, where, where is the, the direction that, you know, the community can follow along to see what is in the pipeline or what the, the vision is for these kinds of changes. And maybe I missed the, the, the last presentation or didn't clue in to, to. Yeah, I think it's the, it's the UX that really is the place where these sort of things get presented. Um, I think it's sort of good feedback, but I think we've only got five minutes left. It'll be really good to see Jan's last um, thing he was going to present with the at least the okay. manager and maybe one more. Oh, um, if I share my screen. Awesome. Oh, I can't share it whilst you're sharing, Ian. Sorry. Um, if you have any more comments, though, Ian, feel free to just to, to either send them to me personally or chuck them on the, the Git thread. Um, Definitely all is. Um, yeah, I'll create some issues for any of those things like the casing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there are. Um, and just tag, you can tag Jan and me and Mark in them sort of thing. Um, we'll probably, I'll, I'll probably see them, but no guarantees if I'm not tagged. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly go through the last three things I think that's free. Um, the first is a, a new kind of UI for the theme plugin. Um, so previously the theme plugin presented you a list of radio buttons, um, each listing what the theme was. Um, the downside is this doesn't give you a preview of what the theme actually is. Um, so you might come across the solarized theme and have no idea say what solarized looks like. Um, so the advantage of this is you'd have a small preview um, of the little theme. 
Um, the issue is right now the theme colours are actually loading, so they all look the same. Um, but ideally, the, the little tile for the dark theme would be dark. Solar ice would be kind of blue or yellow, for example. Um, so it's just to give the user a bit more kind of idea of what they're going to be selecting before they hit apply or, or save. Um, are there any comments on, on that? So, so could those just be screenshots? That looks like a brilliant idea to me. Just pick, pick the one based on how it looks. Uh, mm -hmm. So what you did now is you actually rendered those using, using real components, real HTML components? Yeah, the, the little preview is just SVG, yeah. Um, and it'll pick up the theme colors um, just right now. I don't really know the best approach to load the theme. Um, so I've kind of been discussing that with Tim on the kind of branch for that. Um, so yeah, just, just to give a bit more kind of information to the user really. Yeah, I think that looks brilliant. That's, that's a lot more palatable to me. I, I don't know what Solarize means. I'm embarrassed to admit that I don't know UI that well. So Solarize for me would have no meaning. You, you describe my exact case. I don't know what Solarize means. It's my terminal background color. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really like it. Um, I wanted to do this from the beginning. I just didn't really have time to try and figure out how to make it work with Jenkins, the radio buttons. <laughs> Looks like you had some fun getting it to work. <laughs> It took a long time, yeah. Those radio buttons are, are horrible. <laughs> but yeah, um, but so yeah. that's the, the first of three things. Are there any more comments on that? So I, th I think that it would be a good integration to get the live preview working at the same time. When you mm -hmm. click it, it changes the theme. Um, I, I think you'll probably likely need to do that sort of thing to make the theme colors get loaded anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it would be too hard, but I need a few changes. Awesome. Um, the next kind of experimental change is updating the configure screen um, for kind of jobs, like so. Wow. Um, so one thing I've done is just move the tabs from the top to the left. Um, kind of thought being that users have more horizontal space than vertical. Um, and also kind of some of the kind of feedback about the new form stuff is that it doesn't really take advantage of screen space. So people have kind of really crazy wide monitors, but the, the form itself is quite small. Um, so I've tried to address that a little bit with this by having the sidebar um, and then updating the actual inputs to resize depending on your screen size. Um, I, can't say, I can't say I ever use those tabs, but I don't, I also don't have huge, I don't have freestyle builds, so maybe that's why. So yeah, the, the inputs will now kind of go up to about a thousand pixels in width. So that'll hopefully uh, address any kind of comments around kind of using space properly. Um, so yeah, it kind of works identically to bit of how it did for this just moves to the left. Um, so you scroll down the kind of sidebar changes and just the looks, looks quite weird. I'm assuming it's not intended yeah. to be there. No, I mean, I spent a while trying to fix these cards and then scrapped all of it. So it's just, they're a bit of a pain right now, but something I definitely want to address. Yeah, I, I tried to fix, it was moving that help icon back to the same line, but still being able to drag them was the issue I was having. Mm -hmm. as, as soon as I moved the help icon back to the line, I couldn't drag them. Yeah. I, th um, I, think, I think this is lovely. Uh, I, I would only have a, bit, a few stylistic changes like, uh, but I think those can be, I can give the feedback in the PR. Sure. Uh, I, I, just, I just think, for example, the configuration title may be a bit uh, superfluous, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. But definitely, I, I would only try to make sure that the, the most important thing, in my opinion, is that it has the same width as the sidebar, so as not to be changing layout widths and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think this is this 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 looks really good. I, I've always been bothered by the tabs, to be honest. Um, did you change the new item screen? Because I think the new item used the sort of some sort of similar code. No, uh, it's still the same. not yet. <laughs> not just this yet, no. Um, but well, there's definitely the, one page I want to take a look at. Well, the nice thing is that there's lots of legacy code in there. Legacy JavaScript, um, I can hold you clean it up uh, if you want. Uh, 
there's lots of legacy JavaScript and CSS that was uh, a very difficult to theme as well with hard-coded via colors. So it's great that at least, um, yeah. Yeah, that page is very nice, but get to it at some point, I guess. Um, Ian, you've got your hand up. Yeah, just two really quick thoughts. I think one was mentioned already, which is uh, set a real realistic expectation of how wide the screen should be at a maximum. Because I think there was a ticket raised the other day about somebody complaining that we didn't take advantage of all the width. And he had a 27 inch wide monitor, but that would completely uh, destroy most normal people who are working on a smaller screen. Um, the other one for consideration is the build history, job configuration history plugin recently added a box to the very right hand side to enter the reason. I'm not sure if you guys are using it at all. But we have it on ci.jenkins.io. Okay, so the question would be where does that box end up in the new layout? Probably in the same weird place that it's always been, I would say. So it's, floated it's, off to the, uh, yeah, it might be a bit weird. Is there any opportunity that it would end up as a, um, in the tab on the left with, uh, uh, can, can somebody add to that configuration um, um, as a they, tab? They can't right now, but it's something that will definitely be open to looking at. Um, I've not seen the plugin myself, so I can't really comment too much yeah but. it's a thing for people who are managing their jobs manually you can comment on what changes you're doing it, it records mm -hmm. whenever anyone saves things and it, it just creates a box on the page that says please comment your changes and it has a little text area where you can write a description of what you changed mm -hmm. yeah in a perfect world it would float beside the save and apply buttons but mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah i just it. It looks really weird already. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't oh, it t it's terrible. But I wouldn't want you to break that um, without giving prior notice to to that if there is a solution. Yeah, I could probably just take a quick look and just make sure, just see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could end up even weirder. <laughs> yeah, um, this kind of view isn't isn't kind of open for a branch yet. Um, just because it's reliant on the new form stuff. Um, so I'll probably have a branch for this kind of December time, probably, um, depending on how the forms goes, really. Um, and then the last thing, oh, sorry. I was just, I was just something for the end, so if you just want to show your last thing. Sure. Um, the last thing is kind of really experimental. It's kind of a new search review for Jenkins. Um, so one of the kind of issues I've had past Dave Jenkins is kind of finding builds or, or kind of jobs and stuff. Um, I found the search not terribly helpful um, before in Jenkins. Um, it was never particularly clear what you were clicking on. Um, so I wanted to kind of explore ways to address that. Um, so I've got this kind of new search UI, it's kind of reminiscent of like Spotlight or kind of Visual Studio Codes, kind of little command bar, um, like so. Um, so you can just kind of start typing and you'll get suggestions kind of dropping down um, like so. Um, kind of the advantage of this is you have more space for your results. Um, results are categorized um, and they can also have icons and descriptions like so. Um, just so it's a bit more kind of, it gives a bit more information as to what. You search for a job? Um, it should be able to. Oh. Right. No, I've not really tweaked any of the kind of stuff that it returns, apart from adding the kind of setting stuff. Um, but it's something I'd definitely like to kind of add to, to make it a bit more kind of comprehensive. Um, that looks beautiful. So that's, that's, that's the kind of search idea, really. Um, and it's got a search kind of command shortcut as well, which is nice, because developers love that sort of stuff. I guess um, the main thing to check is just check the accessibility of the results and mm -hmm. voiceover sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I will, uh, I think it is a good approach. Uh, I will just try to make sure that uh, I don't think we are using modality like this anywhere in Jenkins. So I think it's a bit of a new pattern to introduce just for search. Uh, does feel a bit of aggressive. I do think uh, like better, uh, better results could be an idea. Uh, maybe in, 
there are many uh, I, I think this looks really good um but i uh, if you what you want is the inspiration there are lots of stuff but i think this uh, this would make a great pr especially this more categorization mm -hmm. definitely awesome this is new search from scratch right no no yeah who you are no nothing yeah no com completely from scratch um i think you might as well just create a new screen to be honest or a mm -hmm. or something that's a model that just a, a i'm sure you've seen this sort of thing that's a model that takes a full page with an x on the on the top just a full page but it's not that obvious it's as you said it's a bit too spotlighty too in mm -hmm. For my days, but I think the, the concept has potential and the interaction pattern, which is the most important thing, really does have potential. I think it's great. Awesome. By the um, way, I will prefix everything with in my opinion, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, so so for me, this looks marvelous. And I think even, even if that modality is not con has not been used in Jenkins before, I think this is a great approach because for me, when I'm searching, I'm truly no longer thinking about the other things that are on screen. I am really focused on. So for me, that the modality that you've implemented fits my use model perfectly. So I guess I'm I'm inverse of Felix's observations. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the stuff I've got to share. Really, um, I'll, I'll kind of have branches or threads open in the kind of coming month or or two or so for this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, um, thanks everyone for your time, really. I'll, uh, I'll stop sharing if that's all right. Yeah. So that's just yeah. one question from me. Is is the, is the form rework ready for another look? I haven't really been following it too much. Um, I'll need to have another look at the comments, but I've addressed probably about half of them so far, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just getting through them, really. There's quite a few. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how, if that one got badly hit by any tests or anything. I know the buttons one got stuck behind the ATH tests. I've almost got the form element path PR merged, which means we can change it inside of the Jenkins itself without relying on that. And that should unlock, unblock hopefully some of the form stuff. But I know the buttons one, re the buttons PR really broke ATH a lot. Um, just selectors and markup changes. Um, I haven't really checked how much the form one is affected or not. Um, th those damn capitalization changes in the tables broke a whole bunch of test labs effects. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to change it to be equals ignore case all over the place. <laughs> uh, they'll still work if you change it back because I didn't change it to capital. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, yeah, I've mostly been focusing on the form element path side of it as it affects the buttons um and that should be pretty much ready to get merged in um so, so but, tim that's yeah. breathtaking you're you're telling me that ath we may be close to having it pass again i mean we had a sort of a record breaking we actually got a green ath for the first time not not very long ago and and you're giving us hope that we may get it again oh we got it so it's been reliably green it got broken in a couple of the ones recently. Um, I fixed it up until um, maybe the 2.321, I think. I think it's fixed. I think it's still, it's still green. Like form element path PR ran this morning against, I, just, I don't think it's run against 2.3. I don't think it's run against the last weekly from you. Actually, I think it has. So I think up to the last weekly, everything's green. Great, thank you. Sta stable was green, although stable's kind of broken because I didn't add full compatibility in one of the tests. The stable's got like one or two tests failing, but they don't matter really. I upgraded it because my plugin made a change. And I had to make a change for the plugin, but then, yeah, I could, but it's basically green on stable. Um, but no, it's, it's reliably green, um, which I think was one thing we need to make sure, really sure all of these web UI tests we run both ATH and BOM against. Otherwise it's just a pain of having to fix them afterwards. Um, I've had to fix a few BOM things be Bezel got quite mad, I think. We got quite annoyed um, when a whole bunch of bomb tests started breaking for some of these things. Um, but I fixed all those and so, yeah, I've ran ATH and bomb against some of the new ones. 
now, so you recommended that we evaluate the pull requests against ATH and VOM before they're merged. How do we do that? Is there a place where I should have known how to do that already and I haven't looked or? Um, so it's pretty easy. You either need an incremental build or even just a um, artifact from ci.jenkins.io that's built it. And then BOM in the sample plugin pom.xml, you just change, is it sample plugin? Yeah, you just change it from the latest weekly version to, to your incremental build. Um, and for ATH, there's a script called run.sh and it fetches latest weekly from mirrors to Jenkins.io and you just change that URL to point to your artifact. So just change it change it from fetching that to um, where just some, some file that can be downloaded um, in a PR and then it will just run it. Took me a little bit to figure out the best way of doing it. Or where it was even there but you can see some of my recent prs where i've ran some ath things from prs the benefit of running it in the ath repo is it does the split thing where it splits the test into like 10 different groups of tests and it runs them all in parallel on different machines if you change core to run all the tests then it takes like eight hours plus whereas if you run it in the ath repo it takes 40 minutes Okay, so so if I look at your at your PRs, I can see hints of the techniques. I noted run.sh. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. It'll be called cool, something like test something. Okay. I think I closed. Yeah, test. There's one I just closed two days ago. Test Jenkins Jenkins 5778, which is the removal of assets, which is so close, but um not my fault, found a bug in it. I'm not sure if you've seen it, Dan. Um, if, you set a, if you set an agent offline with a reason, the SVG goes like giant <laughs> for error. Oh. <laughs> he found that, I think for one of the changes, he missed setting a site on it. Mm -hmm. But all the tests pass now. Excellent, thank you. Any, we're, we're about 15 minutes over. Anything else we need to discuss here? Do, are we at a point where we need to consider switching back to every two weeks for UX SIG rather than every four weeks? The four weeks was a long gap since our last meeting. I think we should do two weeks, at least this time, given it's almost Christmas for the next one. Actually, and right. The, the next one would be probably right in the Christmas holidays. So how about a proposal we'll meet again in two weeks for UX SIG? And then we will visit then to decide if we meet two weeks later, because that during that that holiday break, I may not be available. I don't know about others. Yeah, depending on COVID, I'm planning to be away. But if COVID, happen, if COVID ruins my trip to Germany, then I won't be away. <laughs> okay. All right. So next, next session, next meeting in two weeks, uh, and I'll get the calendar updated to schedule it. Thanks, Mark. Any other topics? All right, Ian, thank you for being here. Jan, thank you for being here. Il Defonso as well, thanks very much. Meeting ends, recording will be uploaded probably within 24 hours. <laughs>